right? So today uh, we are here to talk about people as systems thinkers, right? Uh, what does it take to be a systems thinker? How do we sort of uh, develop and enable the skills required? We all know the impact that systemic thinking, not structured conversation about how can we really mainstream these ideas of systems thinking and the skills and capabilities that sort of uh, one needs to then develop. Okay, so um, I don't know if uh, I'd like us to just go on to our Miro board uh, from which we'll be working on today. Um, so I want us to, I know we did a, some brief introductions, but just to uh, introduce ourselves uh, with a sticky note on the second um, second slide there, uh, just to give us your name, your, your industry, and maybe something interesting about you. The linked to the marrow well. Okay. So just your name and where you are dialing in from. So we have Tim that just joined us as well. Welcome, Tim. We're using this mirror board here. I'm going to post um, the link again so you can access. And we're just doing a quick warm up so you can put your sticky notes here where we are um, on the information on where you're from. And yeah, maybe something uh, interesting they would like to share about yourself. It would be very good. While everybody is still completing that, uh, I want to try something out, right? So for those that are already done, I want you to find somebody who, uh, who has also completed and maybe choose another sticky, another color, and then just respond to them and say, welcome uh, to, to the event.
All right. I think uh, that's a great start. Uh, everybody has um, told us a little bit about themselves. Uh, from everyone to everyone, I think welcome to the event. And I hope the session is going to be as, infor as informing. So now that we have a sense of the diversity in the room, uh, let's look at uh, the heart of today's discussion, right? So systems thinking is not just a theoretical sort of concept. Uh, it's a powerful tool that shapes how we understand and solve complex problems in our rapidly changing world. In today's interconnected and fast paced moving environment, uh, understanding the sort of intricacies of systems is very important. So systems thinking enables us to see the bigger picture, identify the patterns within the system and discover innovative solutions that address multifaceted challenges. As people, our ability to think systemically empowers uh, us to navigate uncertainties, drive meaningful change and create positive impact on the world around us, right? So. Today's session is really just going to uh, be a conversation for us to really, uh, you know, be together with the, 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 the concepts of systems thinking. And uh, we have a Miro board that we've put together. Um, we are going to put uh, the group today into uh, breakout rooms, uh, which will then have the teams go through certain key concepts of systems thinking uh, with a question coupled to it for people to sort of think about a, the, the, the different concepts that um, would allow us to think more systemically. So there are a few questions that you would then discuss within the breakout room uh, with a culminating question really geared towards how do we embrace systems thinking uh, that would then be the one that we would all then give feedback to um, towards the end. So the breakout rooms would be about 25 minutes, you know, for the conversation and the discussion. Uh, I know sometimes it's not enough time, but uh, just so that we do not go over time, I think uh, 25 minutes will do. And then uh, we give some time for feedback, right? So that we can give um, our insights or share our insights with the rest of the group. Uh, and then we'll maybe look at some key takeaways that we've um, sort of picked up individually uh, and together within the session today. Um, so before we go into the breakout rooms, uh, I think it's also just then important to, uh, to highlight why focusing on people as system thinking is important. Uh, as individuals, we are not isolated entities. We are part of a larger system, our communities, organizations, and the global society. Uh, by nurturing our ability to think systemically, we can catalyze positive change and contribute to building uh, more resilient, sustainable, and equitable uh, systems for everyone. Uh, so we are going to then move into about three breakout rooms that would then um, have us discuss the questions on the board. Great, so if you uh, land on the group one or the room one, then you go to the um, to this first section here. If you land on group two, then you come to the second row. And if you come to the third group, then you come to the third row. Okay.
Yes, uh, Maria have a question or comment? Just, just a quick question. Um, are we going to work on a specific question or just the, the characteristics of the systems thinker? Um, just a practical uh, question. Sure. Um, I think uh, since uh, Sheldon's audio is not very good, maybe Boytu can reply to it. Yeah, you can decide in the groups which question you want to tackle. Um, I'm guessing it's also a matter of like expertise. Um, and in that sense, you can give like practical examples of how you've experienced each one. And then we'll be able to gather together again and then almost like share our insights. So yeah, I'll be assigning to people to each breakout room and then we'll be back in, uh, let's make it 20 minutes, okay? that we can't get back in until they close this out. Is that right? I don't know how it works. Yeah, they're about to close in like 45 seconds. We just happen to be the first. But I got a question for you then. Um, the last slide was about emergence and it's, it's talking about real world questions or examples that could influence our behavior. And one of my last calls about uh, uh, system thinking was that mm -hmm. only the act of talking about it was better, even if we are not like uh, providing value and, and and by implementing it because sometimes mm -hmm. implementing sustainability outcomes it's it's very hard and it takes a long time it's a long mm -hmm. uh, like you must wait until maybe two years to figure out if you got impact on this and sometimes we are not even mm -hmm. uh, allocated in projects for this time right so Sometimes projects are shorter than the time that we are able to prove the impact that they value. So yes, uh, yes. it's it's uh, uh, something that got into my mind when we were talking about emergence of of uh, those ecosystems or uh, the sustainable behavior. And I was I was wondering what are your thoughts on this, maybe. If anyone yeah. got to experiment this improved impact on their projects, how was it? <laughs> yeah, I guess we can we can welcome other voices in the room as well. Um, just from the different rooms that we were in, I guess this would be a perfect opportunity to just share some of the words. One, so feel free to unmute yourself. I'm sorry, there was a bit of um, cut off on the, the audio for on my end. Wait, I just want to make sure that were you asking me to just share something a little bit about myself? Yeah, just I don't any, want to assume that is. Just any insights that you that you find of value from the breakout room that you were in and the discussion that um, was being had. Yeah, and, and again, I apologize. I came in late, so I just really no wanted worries. to hear what others, but um, I think what I could, what I offered is um, in the subject of emergence, um, I live in Chicago, um, and there's some migration of people from the, the south that's being busted in north. 
um, and some of the people in certain neighborhoods are resisting them being able to welcome them. So there's patterns of emergence that's coming in, but um, some of, because the policies are not necessarily looking at those patterns, it's, it's an incomplete picture of how to respond to this huge influx of, of migrants coming into the city. Um, and, you know, you, you see it on TV and they're protesting for people coming into their neighborhoods. So there's patterns there, which I feel is a, a form of emergence, and yet it's not really being paid attention to. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so please feel free to unmute yourself and share some insights from the different rooms that we were in as well. Yeah, towards the end of our conversation, we were delving into a little bit about what are the characteristics of a systems thinker. So we, it, the conversation had led up to it and the start of it was essentially this whole idea of systems thinking is well-defined um, but you know from an individual basis it's, it's a lot more difficult so we didn't get in too depth uh, into that what that is but a few things that were brought to mind is like open-mindedness you know willingness to change uh, change opinion the obvious ones about you know seeing things holistically um what what the other ones that come to mind like process focus rather than uh, solutions focus um, so yeah, that was an interesting conversation and certainly something I feel like could be developed a lot, a lot further for sure. Yeah, in, uh, in the group as well, we, yeah, in terms of the characteristics, um, I thought that this one about seeing relationship uh, amongst elements was was quite good because we normally see the the outcomes right we see the elements themselves we don't pay too much attention to how they are connected and uh, what makes them um, emerge and what makes them what they are so just looking into into the relationships and trying to to question that is extremely important to to think deeper and more uh, comprehensively about just the observable um, phenomena that we see. So um, essentially it's just going past the, the given, right? And trying to explain a bit more about what we're actually experiencing, uh, not just in terms of challenges, but in terms of what we actually um, see. So I think, yeah, it was very, very good discussion in the in the group three yeah yeah that i that we didn't move from slide one so i think there was a lot to unpack but i think we need to consistently and continuously go one slide at a time <laughs> there was a lot i was i was wanting to arrive to learning organizations and then i said oh we're never getting that. <laughs> because you know, it, it there was a lot. So thank you for all the information, but we I think we need to consistently continue the discussion. Maybe that's a good moment to create some connections and to learn from people if they got there. Because <laughs> we couldn't. Uh yeah, what you could uh share with us about your your other insights as well. Anyone else wants to maybe share uh, what they got out of the the conversations in their teams? Yeah, I'll build uh, on a little bit more of what uh, Yasmin was saying there too. Like I really enjoyed that opportunity to connect with other people and um, sort of that awareness, right? When you're using that systems thinking lens to look at other people's examples and their situations and being able to connect with them or understand um, their perspective is is helpful, right? And then those um, sort of, uh, I don't want to say solutions thinking approach, but just having that that deeper understanding of the complexities of what people are experiencing 
and then how that relates to yours. So it broadens your sense of perception about it as well from a systems thinking perspective. So I really enjoyed that hearing other people's examples um, and and uh, the things that they've applied. Yeah, and I guess just a quick share on my side. Um, we also spoke around like the challenges that come with almost like the 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 part on of trying to create like an interconnectedness between and um, the teams that use the system or people who are participants of the system but don't necessarily have the buy-in for the change that needs to be made in order to optimize the system itself. Um, obviously, this may differ based on the stakeholders that you may need to encounter or engage with consistently, or maybe the software that needs to be adopted is not necessarily a reflection of the challenges that somebody in the system consistently encounters. So how do we create value amongst people to almost like see each other as people that they can share knowledge amongst each other, or even a matter of like, well, this is the, the challenge that I'm constantly encountering, but somebody within almost like the engagement team might have a best practice that you're not necessarily aware of. So how do we almost like create like parts of or groupings of people that almost not necessarily have a dependency on each other, but need each other to move the, almost like the project or whatever that they're trying to solve for forward. So how do you create that systems awareness is like part of the big thing because um, I guess it's almost like change is always implemented or, or, or integrated by people teams, but people teams are often reliant on frameworks that are almost like best practice across industry. So it may not even be curated for the problem that you're trying to solve or for the team that you're particularly working with. So how do we almost like create champions amongst the people or the participants that will be using the system rather than almost having like an external catalyst in the hopes that people eventually buy into that. Can I just um, building onto that, I think that is so key and I had some aha moment lately about uh, why, because I've been asking why has this not been mainstream? Why do, do haven't, or, and reading a book, I I didn't come up with the answer, obviously, but um, uh, someone very knowledgeable um, wrote a, a, in a book so so clearly, and it said that, for example, why I, I was thinking Peter Senge as an example, and actually she came up or they came up with this uh, uh, acknowledgement that what wasn't taken into account was that to understand the language, the framework, for example, of systems thinking, the fifth, the, the fifth discipline approach to organizational change or learning organizations. Um, she said, yeah, they didn't take into account that that required a lot of training and commitment from the whole, not only leadership team, but the, the whole organization. So what the counterpart to that would be a very curated curated toolkit so that i mean i think that toolkits can be a way of bringing without even t talking or using the same language when if you use visual aids to organize ideas of pe people don't need to understand what is a system thinker who is a system thing? How do we? How does it work? What theory are we talking about? If we're talking BRSDs, if we're talking Janela, whatever author we are talking about. So I said, wow. So that's why, for me at least, SI is so brilliant in that as it because it gives, a, it not only integrates a lot of, <laughs> a lot of theories and etc., uh, but the toolkit is very helpful uh, and I think if you bring that and you don't need to explain and bring all the knowledge and the characteristics you don't need an MBA in systems thinking to be able to use the tools because at least I humbly believe that we are all systems thinkers we just forgot about it Yeah, I couldn't agree more because most often than not, 
you, you you realize that systems thinking is almost about like taking people back to almost like the essential practices that you need to run like a successful team or a successful successful organization. So um, these type of sessions that um, uh, Sheldon, Yasmin, and myself will be facilitating are mostly for almost like cross learning or knowledge sharing just about what's happening in each other's industries or just even what we're seeing as best practices. But more than anything, um, I think dialogue is necessary for, for us to almost like create an awareness, not only amongst each other, but the people that we interact with. Um, because more often than not, we almost like come across a post that we may find insightful, but we don't necessarily have a forum that lets us put those into discussion. So you'll see at the bottom of the board, there's the feedback um, part where you can like just leave any notes on what you think we could improve or what you'd want to see more of. Because I mean, if, if certain rooms only made it past the first slide, I mean, that means there's more to be discussed. And um, yeah, I know myself and Sheldon share the same sentiments that we enjoy having you guys around and just even just getting insights on what people are thinking or maybe some of the challenges that you're encountering more often than not. So yeah, I'll leave it off to, to Sheldon to close us off for the session. All right, uh, thank you there, Waitu. I think we are really past our time. Uh, we really did enjoy it. Uh, it doesn't, um, we can't, you know, continue to say thank you for joining the session. I think it was really an insightful one. Uh, we are going to have uh, a few of more th of these kind of sessions with different topics and themes. So please do have a look out for our, our page and the different sort of conversations that we would have uh, going forward. Once again, thank you very much for joining and uh, have a pleasant day further. Thank you very much, everyone. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you a lot. It was awesome. I love to be part of it. Have a good Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>